On March 27, 1977, among intense fog at Los Rodeos Airport, a tragedy unfolded that would shake the aviation world to its core. It was a day marked by a series of unfortunate events, leading to the deadliest accident in aviation history. Two towering Boeing 747s, KLM Flight 4805 and Pan Am Flight 1736, found themselves on a collision course that would end in devastation, with a total of 500 83 lives lost. The Tenerife airport disaster remains a haunting reminder of the fragility of human life in the skies. The chain of events leading to this catastrophe began with a bomb threat at Gran Canaria Airport, diverting numerous flights to Los Rodeos. As planes crowded the tarmac, thick fog blanketed the runway, obscuring visibility for both pilots and air traffic control. Amidst the chaos, KLM Flight 4805 commenced its takeoff roll. Unaware that Pan Am Flight 1736 was still taxiing on the same runway. In the blinding fog, miscommunication and confusion reigned supreme. Tragically, the collision and subsequent fire claimed the lives of everyone aboard KLM 4805 and the majority of those on Pan Am 1736, leaving only a handful of survivors. To understand the events leading up to the tenor Reef airport disaster, we must first delve into the flight history of the two ill-fated aircraft. Tenerife was not their intended destination, but rather an unscheduled stop burnout of unforeseen circumstances. Both KLM Flight 4805 and Pan Am Flight 1736 were bound for Gran Canaria Airport, also known as Las Palmas Airport, situated on the neighboring island of Gran Canaria. These islands, nestled in the vast Atlantic Ocean of the coast of Morocco, belong to the Canary Islands Archipelago in autonomous community of Spain. Grand Canaria Airport was the intended landing point for both flights, yet unforeseen circumstances, namely a bomb threat, forced them to divert to Tenerife. Let's zoom in on KLM Flight 4805, the tragic protagonist in the Tenerife Airport disaster, departing from Amsterdam Airport Skip Hall in the Netherlands. This charter flight, operated for the Holland International Travel Group, had an unexpected rendezvous with destiny. Commanding the Boeing 747-206B was Captain Jacob Welthuizen van Zanten, a seasoned aviator with an impressive track record. With over over 11,700 flight hours to his name, including significant experience on the 747. Captain Van Zanten was a respected figure within KLM. Assisting him were First Officer Klaas Mers and Flight Engineer Willem Schroeder, both experienced professionals in their own right, contributing their expertise to ensure a safe journey. On board were 14 crew members and 235 passengers, including 52 children children, hailing predominantly from the Netherlands. Among the passengers were also individuals from Germany, Austria, and the United States, each with their own stories and destinations. As the aircraft touched down at Tenerife, passengers disembarked while one Robina van Lanschot opted to stay behind, perhaps unaware of the tragic fate that awaited the 234 souls who remained on board. Now let's turn our attention to Pan Am Flight 1736, a journey that began on the other side of the world, amidst the bustling terminals of the Los Angeles International Airport, with a stopover at New York's John F. Kennedy International Airport. This iconic Boeing 747 embarked on a transcontinental voyage bound for tragedy. Yet amidst its storied past, this flight would be married by a cruel twist of fate. Laden with 380 passengers, including two children, Pan Am Flight 1736 boasted a diverse mix of travelers, predominantly Americans, with a handful of Canadian nationals among them. Guiding this giant of the skies were Captain Victor Grubbs, First Officer Robert Bragg, and Flight Engineer 
George Ward, along with a team of dedicated flight attendants. With decades of combined experience, this crew was well equipped to navigate the challenges of long-haul flight. However, as history would have it, this wasn't the first time Clipa Victor faced adversity in its inaugural year of service. It fell victim to a hijacking, a stark reminder of the dangers that lurked in the skies. As both KLM Flight 4805 and Pan Am Flight 1736 approached the Canary Islands, their routine journeys took a sudden and tragic turn. At 1315, chaos erupted at Grand Canaria Airport as a bomb planted by the superiorist Canary Islands independence movement shattered the calmness of the terminal, injuring several individuals. Fearing the possibility of further attacks, authorities swiftly closed Grand Canaria Airport, redirecting all incoming flights including the two doomed aircraft to Los Rodeos Airport. However, Los Rodeos, ill-equipped to handle such a sudden flow of traffic, found itself overwhelmed with only one runway and limited taxiway space. The airport struggled to accommodate the large airliners diverted from Gran Canaria. As the diverted aircraft occupied the limited space, departing flights were forced to taxi along the runway, a procedure known as back taxiing. Amidst the chaos, Panam Flight 1736 having circled in a holding pattern, reluctantly received orders to divert to Tenerife. Meanwhile on the ground, the situation grew increasingly dire. The KLM aircraft, opting to refuel at Los Rodeos, obstructed the path of the Pan Am plane and the refueling vehicle, leaving the runway inaccessible for takeoff. As the runway bustled with activity and communication crackled through the airwaves, the stage was set for the tragic climax of the Tenerife airport disaster. With instructions from the control tower ringing in their ears, the crews of both KLM Flight 4805 and Pan Am Flight 1736 embarked on the final steps before takeoff. The tower directed the KLM plane to navigate the entire length of the runway before executing a 180 degree turn to position itself for takeoff. Meanwhile, Pan Am received instructions to follow suit, with the added task of navigating the maze of unmarked taxiways. Amidst the chaos and confusion, the Pan Am crew grappled with deciphering the controller's instructions, struggling to locate the elusive third exit, with poor visibility obscuring their path. The crew relied on instinct and a rudimentary airport diagram to guide them. As the tension mounted, the crew's uncertainty grew palpable, their dialogue reflecting the gravity of the situation. Yet amidst the confusion, the looming specter of tragedy remained hidden from view. It was only in the final moments, as the two aircraft hurtled towards each other on a collision course, that the full extent of the misunderstanding became tragically clear. For the crew of Pan Am Flight 1736, the descent into poor visibility was swift and disorienting. As they taxied onto the runway, visibility dwindled to a mere 500 meters, plunging further to less than 100 meters in the blink of an eye. Meanwhile, the KLM plane enjoyed the deceptive clarity, nestled in a relatively good visibility. Yet the serenity was shattered by the looming presence of clouds, hurtling down the runway towards them at an alarming pace. Among the swirling fog and the tension-filled atmosphere on the runway, a series of communication breakdowns would set the stage for the impending tragedy. As the KLM aircraft surged forward propelled by the captain's conviction, crucial messages hang in the air and heard and misunderstood. As the KLM captain advanced the throttles, his co-pilot's MERS sought confirmation on the ATC clearance, but in the cacophony of voices and the shrill interference on the radio, vital information slipped through the cracks. Muris genuinely relayed the aircraft's reading to the tower, while Veldoisen van Zanten's interruption and the controller's ambiguous response further muddled the situation. The controller's OK was misinterrupted as clearance, sealing the KLM crew's fatal misconception. Meanwhile, the Pan Am crew's transmission lost in the radio interference. 
could have been the lifeline that alerted the KLM crew to the impending danger. But fate had other plans as the message vanished into the ether, unheard and unheeded, blind to the presence of the Pan Am aircraft ahead and with no visual confirmation from the tower. The KLM crew hurtled towards disaster, their fate sealed by a chain of miscommunication and misunderstanding. Through the veil of fog, the Pan Am crew caught a glimpse of the approaching behemoth, its landing lights piercing the mist like the eyes of a looming giant. With adrenaline coursing through their veins, they fought desperately to evade the oncoming disaster. In a desperate bid to avert catastrophe, Captain Grubbs wrenched the controls, pushing the throttles to full power as he veered sharply to the left. But it was too late. The KLM aircraft hurtling forward at takeoff speed bore down upon them with relentless force. In a moment of sheer terror, the KLM pilots, realizing the impending collision, attempted a desperate maneuver. With engines screaming and metal groaning, the aircraft glowed at the sky. But the inevitable collision tore through through the fragile fuselage of the Pan Am jet. As the smoke cleared and the flames come down, the true extent of the devastation became painfully clear. Amidst the wreckage of the twisted metal and shared debris, the toll of a human life stood as a stark testament to the horror of the Tenerife airport disaster. All 248 souls aboard the KLM plane, their dreams and aspirations forever extinguished in the inferno of impact, joined the ranks of the fallen. Alongside them, 330 five passengers and crew of the Pan Am aircraft, their final moments shrouded in chaos and terror, met a similar fate. Yet amidst the tragedy, a glimmer of hope emerged from the darkness, 61 souls battered and bruised but miraculously spared from the jaws of death, emerged from the wreckage, their survival a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. For the survivors, the nightmare was far from over, trapped amidst the smoldering remnants of the Pan Am jet. They waited in agonizing anticipation for rescue, their cries for help lost amidst the fog and confusion. As we conclude our journey through the haunting tale of the Tenerife airport disaster, we're reminded of the fragility of life and the sobering consequences of human error. From the chilling moments of miscommunication on the fog-covered runway to the horrific efforts of first responders and investigators. This tragic event has left an indelible mark on the annals of aviation history. In the end, remember to turn your notifications on to stay updated on our future explorations. Leave a like if you found this journey enlightening and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more captivating tales.